So I'm about to go to town and I'm gonna pop by the co-op and I'm gonna get two of their Cadillac soil samples. Nobody ever gets more than really NPK, four or five things tested. They can test like 20 different things. And I've done it before, excellent test. I wanna know everything that I can possibly know about this dirt. And I'm taking two samples, one from a spot that has not had emergence yet, right there, which, which is a little harder and um, it had no worms in it. It's not hard. I mean, you, it's it's really genuinely soft compared to what I started with. But the ground where I turned up a, a living root mass does have worms. So what does that tell us? It tells us it has biology. It just confirms that the rhizosphere, which is the area immediately touching that root mass, injects stuff that feeds the bacteria, the fungi, then the next higher order, nematodes, microarthropods, all these sorts of things, ciliates. And then, you know, the stuff that brings worms is what feeds on the bacteria and fungi. The bacteria and fungi are small, then there's the next higher order of life, the next higher order, and then you get worms. So for my own records, the tall tub is my, let's call it, uh, I think I call it garden bed number one. The short tub is going to come out of the pig pen wood chip compost pile that's turning into garden bed number uh, three or four, I think. Oh, look at that. That's chocolatey. Soft. When you turn it up, you expose air, you get a little bit of, a little tiny, tiny bit of nitrification, you know. Remember, this is all manure. I see some small little living critter right there. But without any roots to feed this, I do not expect earthworms. Not yet. But it's soft. It's very soft. Because it's almost pure wood chips. That has... It's pretty darn crumbly. And I... It does have clay because the pigs go and get down to the bottom. And they root it all up and flip it in the air. But man, is that low compaction once you get once you break the initial compaction pigs do compact pretty hard but let's scoop that in there there's no rock no uh no hard clods of clay so i should do pretty good Okay, this is the soil sample for garden bed one. That's the first one I showed that had some greens growing in it. And I'm gonna start at the top left corner with soil pH. I'm at 7.4. Uh, I'm gonna try to bring that down. It's actually more alkaline than I expected. I, my understanding is that 6.3 is the sweet spot for mineral absorption, maximum mineral absorption of all different classes of minerals. So I'm gonna try to acidify the soil over time. Uh, phosphorus is quite high, very high at 138 pounds per acre. Potassium also was really good at 328 pounds per acre. Calcium is extremely high at 4,256 pounds per acre, which is probably giving me some trouble in the calcium to magnesium ratio department. My magnesium is at 162 pounds an acre, which is that first, that top yellow line that's in the low medium. It's almost low. So when you put calcium and magnesium in that ratio, you're going to have trouble. Sulfur is always low in clay soil because clay soil has got a negative charge and so does sulfur, I believe. And so that just doesn't stick. And as the air pollution gets reduced, uh, we've got less sulfur parts per million in the atmosphere. Boron is also, it's that third in a row equal size bottom, um, equal size medium line in yellow, 0.8 pounds per acre. Copper was pretty good at... Uh, 5.6 pounds. Iron is optimum at 346 pounds an acre. Manganese was 98. Zinc was great at 11.4 pounds per acre. Sodium was very low, which is which I believe is excellent at 48 pounds an acre. We've got 6.9% organic matter and an estimated 182 pounds per acre of nitrogen release, which is optimum. Now going over to the top right, Calculated cation exchange capacity is 11.8. The more clay you have in a soil, the higher that number is going to be. 
And then my saturation percents, you got a 3.6% for K, 90.2% saturation for calcium, which is just too high. Um, I would be better off at 68. Uh, my, my K saturation is good, 3.6, and the, the range should be about 3 to 5%. My magnesium, I'm at 5.7, and I should be around 12%. Hydrogen, I don't know why it doesn't register, but ideally you've got 10% hydrogen down in your soil from the atmosphere. And then sodium, you want to have at less than 1.5, and I'm good because I'm at 0.9. So again, it's my calcium to magnesium and my potassium to magnesium ratios are pretty well out of whack. Now, this is some information from Nutritech Solutions out of Australia, a guy named Grammy Sate. I think I'm saying his name right. Um, seems to have been, he seems to be a follower of uh, William Albrecht, who's a soils specialist out of, I want to say it was University of Missouri in the black and white days when everybody had suits and ties on. Even out, at, even out in the woods, they had suits and ties. Um, so... Yeah, clay has got a negative charge, which means it attracts positive particles. So clay does hold lots of particles. Now your base saturation is the percent of your major cations in the soil, which was those those percentages I went down through. So your bases are calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and hydrogen. Now good numbers would be 68% calcium, 12% magnesium, 3 to 5% potassium, and less than 1.5% on the sodium. Um, if 3% is good enough potassium for pasture. You want to be around 5% for, uh, you know, more intensive crops like tomatoes or something like that. Again, 6.3 pH is where you get maximum mineral availability of all the whole range. Now, according to this fella, the number one thing is your calcium to magnesium ratio. And that's going to determine the soil's gas exchange, which is your oxygen in and your CO2 out. It's very important. So calcium is a large particle that loosens the soil, which means that it acts as a flocculant. And uh, magnesium is a smaller one that tightens it. So you would say, oh, let me just put tons and tons of calcium, but you can't. You can't get too far out of whack. They have to go in a range together because magnesium is critical to chlorophyll. So um, cation exchange capacity dictates the ideal calcium to magnesium ratio. Now in sandy soils, you might have a CEC of four which sandy soils, just they just don't hold minerals. So you would want to tighten that up, and that would be a ratio of calcium lower and a ratio of magnesium higher. So like a three to one ratio might be correct for a sandy soil. A super heavy clay would be like around a, a CEC of around 40. And um, that might be like a seven to one calcium to magnesium ratio. Now I'm in the 15 to one, almost 16 to one. So, and my, and I'm in medium clay. I'm in, I'm in actually lower medium clay because I've got so much organic matter in here. My, my MEQ on the, uh, the, the mine is 11.8 right now. In the past, it was as high as 20. So adding in all the wood chips and manures and straw and, you know, things like this, the mulches, that has cut my clay density, that hardness, it has cut it in half, which is great. Um, moving on, supposedly the number two thing is your potassium to magnesium ratio, which should be about one to one. So, you know, I've got 328 pounds per acre of potassium, but only 162 on magnesium. So I need to bring, I really need to bring my magnesium up to like 600 pounds an acre to make my calcium ratio work. Um, phosphorus is critical for plant immunity. So the next thing down is we've got the phosphorus to sulfur ratio. And other than factory pollution, the other source for sulfur comes from soil humus. Um, you want to have your phosphorus to sulfur at a one-to-one, -one, give or take. That's number three. Now number four is phosphorus to zinc. You want to have 10 phosphorus per one zinc. Um, it's supposedly more important to stay at a 10 to one ratio than it is to boost either one of them. So uh, phosphorus is a building block for ATP, which, and also for immunity and glucose production, and zinc is uh, real big on leaf size. So a plant that's got small leaves is supposedly indicative of a zinc deficiency, and also zinc has a lot to do with nitrogen fixation from the atmosphere. 
The fifth uh, ratio in terms of importance is said to be potassium to sodium at a four to one, four potassiums to one sodium. Um, the big thing here is not to let your salt, sodium is salt, not to let your salt get too high. If you're using sac fertilizers, nitrate fertilizers, your sodium is gonna keep climbing and climbing. When you get above 1.5% saturation with salt, you're gonna start having problems. And it's gonna take time and rain to wash that out, like a fallow period, uh, cover cropping to bring life back into your soil and deal with the sodium. Salt is a wonderful herbicide. If you put water, salt, and Dawn dish soap in a sprayer, it will work just as good as glyphosate and way the heck healthier. Now the sixth ratio is iron to manganese. You always wanna have more iron than manganese, but no more than two irons per one manganese. That's what I've got. So again, that is Gramey Sait, I hope I'm saying his name right, S-A-I-T, at Nutritech Solutions out of Australia. I was pretty impressed with his article, his, his writings. Um, and now I'm gonna show you the incredible speed that the pig pen made almost equally good soil. Because I've got five years of cover cropping garden bed number one to get to where I'm at. And only six months to turn trees that were standing into, in, it's planted. I mean, it's not the greatest garden right now. I'm behind schedule. I got everything started late and I haven't had any time to put into it. So it's just a weed patch, but there was a tree last year. It's a garden now. It's dirt, pure dirt from pigs. So that is pig pen. Let me show you what uh, that sample looks like. All right, so this is the same exact test for a soil sample that came from the pig pen, which most of my pig videos are chronicling the adventure of using pigs to turn a few chipped up trees into garden dirt, which again is planted right now. Um, the phosphorus is down quite a bit. This has never had a buckwheat crop grown in it like the cover crop gardens have had. So my phosphorus is down at uh, 58 pounds. My potassium is actually a little bit higher at 342 versus 328. My potassium was about half in the pig pen. My calcium is also very high in the pig pen at 3290 compared to 4256, but it's still, the ratio is better, a lot better, but it's still not, not ideal on that um, potassium to magnesium. Now, I'm sorry, I'm calcium to magnesium. My magnesium is actually a little bit better in here. The pig pen's got 206 versus 162, which is interesting and I don't exactly know why. Sulfur is a tiny bit lower. It's actually in the low range um, at 18 pounds an acre. Boron is a bit better. It's dead square in the medium at 1.0 pound per acre. Copper on the pig pen is at 2.2 versus 5.6, so my copper's actually my copper's actually a bit low on the wood chip pile. Iron's at 412 pounds per acre versus 346 in the garden bed, so 412 in the pig pen. Manganese is in the lower medium range, 92 pounds per acre in the pig pen and 98 in the garden bed. Zinc, pig pen is 9.6, which is optimum. Uh, versus 11.4. I guess I could attribute that to cover crops in the garden bed, having a little bit more zinc. The sodium is low in both of them, 46 versus 48, two pounds less in the wood chip pile. Now here's where it does get interesting. Um, the pig pen, the, the wood chips, has 8.1% organic matter versus 6.9, so a full percent and then some for... Uh, in the favor of the rotted wood chips, which is releasing an estimated 206 pound per acre of nitrogen versus the 182. So the pig pen wins in organic matter and, and in nitrogen release. And also if we go over to that top right again, you look at that um, calculated cation exchange capacity, it also matches up because the garden bed is definitely more clay and it's got a higher cation exchange capacity at 
versus the pig pen, the wood chips is at 9.6 instead of 11.8. So it's going to be a softer, less clay dense, you know, uh, clay is a hard material to deal with under certain conditions. Um, but that increase in organic matter got us more nitrogen. Um, now the saturation percentage is closer to what it should be in the wood chip pile and the pig, pig dirt. So I got 4.6 on the potassium where it should be in that three to five range. So I'm good on potassium percentage. Calcium, a target, supposedly a good target is 68%. I'm at 85.7 in the pig pen, which is better than 90. The magnesium, pig pen is at 8.9, where I want to be at 12, but I'm better than the 5.7 from the garden bed. Hydrogen is still at zero. I, I guess this test just does not measure hydrogen. And um, the sodium is still fine at 1%, where I want to be, stay below 1.5. So, all things considered, I have almost nothing for work in the pig pen. And I have some pretty good numbers to start with. I have a pretty good bones on this soil, so to speak. And not a, not a whole lot of effort to improve what's suboptimal. Um, whereas, I put a lot of time and work into cover cropping for years, multiple crops a year, not not one, like th two to three, one of them I've done four times in a single year. So that's a lot of work, a lot of time and effort. And the pigs did all of the work once I set up the initial infrastructure, got the wood chips and dumped them in there and turned the pigs loose. So I'm definitely 100% sticking with making new dirt this way it's a it's a really good system and i hope this video has been helpful to you um i can't tell you how valuable the 20 dollars per sample has been to me because it, it gives you a it's like it's like having a google maps but not having a gps you know like if your phone couldn't tell you where you are right now how could it possibly give you directions so you're sitting in Albuquerque and it thinks you're in Oregon. It just gives you wrong directions. If you don't have a soil sample, you don't know where you are right now. So you, you're just throwing stuff. You're pissing in the wind. Just, just spending money, throwing chemicals into the ground, and probably making things worse. Uh, honest to God, you, you're almost certainly making wrong turns. Be like trying to navigate a city you've never been in without GPS by randomly making turns. The chances of you getting where you want to go are next to zero so anyway thanks for listening thanks for watching praise the lord and god bless you